What's up, everybody? Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. Two mics, no filter, hanging out with you. And you have gotten to know us over these last couple months, Andrea Smith and myself, Dan Tortora, a.k.a. DT, having some fun with you. Two mics, we have no filter, we also have. So with that being said, Miss Andrea, how are you? Hello, Dan. I am good. So... That was so short. That's it. Well, what would you like to talk about today? <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about anything. So, I mean, honestly, we, okay. So, one of the things that I wanted to get into today was our conversation off the air about conversations that happen with people around you in public that, I mean, I feel like I shouldn't know the information. There's a lot of information. I mean, listen, we'll get into a lot of different parts of this, but the topic for today, and, and we typically go all over the place, but the two mics, no filter, you know, covers that in the title. We were going to talk today about public conversations that should be happening privately or private conversations happening in public. And so, or I said it backwards the first time. So private conversations that are happening publicly that's that are a little bit uh, interesting so i wanted to so like at restaurants yes you're overhearing a table talking about something that you're like almost feeling uncomfortable that you're listening to yeah i mean sometimes and, and i'm gonna and i told you this off the air but i have yeah. this way about me and i don't know how to describe it but i have this weird i have the, i don't want to call it weird I, I consider it like a superpower i'm gonna i'm gonna say i'm an x-men i'm a mutant so i have this ability with my ears to turn the ambient sound on or turn the sound on of the person or people that I'm with. So I was telling you, I was, if you and I were sitting at dinner and we were talking and hey, hey this, is what we're going to do on the show this week, whatever, whatever. So you and I are talking, I hear you. We could be in a restaurant with 200 people. I hear you. And in the background, all I hear is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like it was just, a, just ambient sound. If I want to hear the people around me, like if you say, oh my gosh, did you hear what that guy just said at the other table? I have to turn you down and turn them up. And I don't know how to describe it other than saying that I have like a volume adjustment in my ear that can either work to my per person with me or to the mm -hmm. people around me. Typically, you're turned up mm -hmm. and the around noise is turned down. But mm -hmm. in the case of what I just experienced, mm -hmm. my mom and I were having having a lunch at a diner and we weren't we weren't talking as loud as the table behind us, behind my mom. And the guy was so loud that I couldn't help but hear him. Then I wanted to know if she heard him and she made a face at one point. And then I listened to him and her, which only turned into what I would consider to be the liking of turning on a television and watching a show, like watching CSI Miami for two minutes, then watching a rock movie, then watching Kevin Hart's comedy, then watching the weather, then watching the news, then watching a football game, then watching a basketball game, then going to Jerry Springer. It was all over the place, made no sense whatsoever. There were no connections to the conversations that they were having, yet they felt like they were making a connection. And it provoked me wanting to have the conversation with you on the show today here on Two Mics No Filter inside a wake up call of what to do when you hear a private conversation in public, especially the one that I heard, which was very intense in certain places. I don't know if intense is the word. I, I feel like I just, I know too much about those people now. Yeah. I, I would say I don't have a story I think to bring to the light that I can recall, but I will say when this stuff happens to me, I want to know more. Like, you know, but you have to remember, I like reality TV. I like those kinds of things. So if I start hearing something that like piques my interest, I'm like, what are they fighting about? I've got to know more what's happening. So, so I mean, are you going to share like what, what was so intriguing about it? what was weird? Well, I mean, it looked like two kids in high school, right? Probably okay. seniors in high school or juniors. And they were, you know, the guys talking, the girls talking they're talking mm. about themselves. So I, I heard him say like, I don't really know what we are and I'm not sure, but, and I'm, I'm talking how he was talking. He was talking, you know, when people talk and their words are really long, mm -hmm. you know, and someone's like, but 
I don't know. Like hearing him talk made me want to stab myself. And I just, I'm listening to him talk and I'm listening to her responses and hearing her talk to him and then realizing, I think they're together. I think they're dating. And then me questioning, does his voice not annoy her at all? Or does she like the fact that it takes an hour and a half to get through three words? So I'm just listening to this whole thing. And then she's like, I don't know what we are. He's like, yeah, I'm not really sure. I dated other people and I just, I, I was a sharer and I shared too much. And now I'm not, and now I'm thinking like you talking about sharing is sharing is sharing a lot. And then she said, yeah, my mom was like, oh, that's cool. You're going to lunch with such and such. And now, you know, uh, you guys don't know who you are and you're probably going to move in together and not know who you are. And I'm thinking what parent would want their child to not know what relationship they have with a, with somebody right now and then be like, oh, down the road, you're going to move in with each other and not know what you are. And and then probably raise kids and bring them into that world. And then we have today's society. So I, I'm looking at that conversation, which then turned into him saying, it's not that I want my grandparents to die. And I had no idea where that came from. And then they talked about Alzheimer's and people forgetting things. Then they talked about an Airbnb, six hundred. In high school, you think they're in high school? Yeah, but wait a second. So then the girl goes. So then she. So then they're talking about how much it costs to go on this trip to New York City, and it's like, oh, it's six hundred dollars. Oh, it's only six hundred dollars a night. I'm like, I don't want to spend six hundred dollars a night. And it's like, oh, and then and then the guy goes, well, for working people, it's not that bad. It's only a four thousand dollar trip. Then I'm thinking, how much money are you making? And then I'm thinking, is this the free money that people have gotten over the last couple of years? Because how could a teenager get six hundred dollars? And they have rich parents. Well, yeah. And then so then I'm hearing all this, and then he's like, "Yeah, the property we own." Were you in a wealthy neighborhood? Yes and no. I mean, maybe in certain parts of it, if you drive like uh, five minutes down the road but it was i don't know the conversation just went to so many different places then she was talking about makeup then he's like you have pretty eyes she told him to stop he said he had alien eyes i mean it was it was just it was it was eyes makeup teenagers having a ton of money buying property to not wanting their grandparents to die to they don't know what they are in their relationship and they're just trying to figure it out it it made me want to not go out to eat anymore. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I think I think my response back to you, my text response back to you was I need more context. You realize what I just did there? I tried to drink with the thing closed. I didn't so. notice, but I I still feel like I need more context. You know what I mean? Like I have no context. I can tell you what they look like. I can tell you what I think of the situation, but What do you think of the situation? Other than other than it was weird and it was all over the place. I think that he doesn't realize how. I think that he doesn't know that he's not interested in her. And I think that she doesn't know herself, maybe because of her family, because at one point in the conversation, she's like, well, as soon as my mom got out of rehab, she met a guy and got married. And I was like, it was just I mean, I, listen, it's I know stuff you don't normally hear people say. Right. Strange stuff. But the thing is, is like, if you listen to what some people say, which kind of leads me to my other thing, when yeah. people are fighting in public. I love that, by the way. Okay, but let me tell you something, because I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm two mics, no filter. I'm honest all the time about whatever. I have dated people and there's been arguments publicly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't know where they came from. And I try to bring them down. Uh, I So I have been a part of them. I had one girl scream at me in the middle of Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. And I remember sitting there trying to figure out why she was mad. And I was like, hey, you know, I, I think I had gotten to the point where I was like, at this point, I don't even care. Like, I don't even I, like I don't even care why you're mad, because it's been like all day long. You're trying to ruin my day at Disney and like. And I think I said to her, anybody that tries to ruin Disney has some real problems. Like, who tries to ruin the happiest place on earth? So I sat down and she started yelling. And so I pretended like she was yelling at the guy next to me. And I tried to, like, move myself away. 
like like to just kind of okay she you know and she kept going and then she swore into the point where moms are looking over kids are looking oh, over. yeah so i kind of like when i kind of i got up and i was like hey can you like like we need to like leave or stop because you can't do this especially here and i'm the type of person where like i i don't like fighting with people at all i don't i don't like screaming and swearing i don't, I don't like any of that it doesn't make any part of me feel good especially in public so being somebody who's like been in a fight in public it's so humiliating and embarrassing and then everybody starts to form opinions around you right so like who thinks it's your fault who thinks it's her fault who just wants you guys to shut up who's like eating popcorn enjoying it so like to me hearing the conversation provoked my private conversations that are happening publicly, but you and I have both seen people fight in public. And I, unfortunately have, I have been in the, I have. so yeah. if I, I mean, I throw, I listen, I'm about to throw you for a loop right now, but I mean, I've thrown a glass at somebody before in public. Yeah. So I, I knew you were going to make that face. Like I knew I was going to throw you for a loop. Did I make a face? You did, I did. but it's okay. I mean, listen, it was, I think I mentioned this once before that um, I think when we talked about this, I want to say it was one or two episodes ago, we talked about, you know, like certain relationships bring out crazy triggers in, in you or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And there was one relationship I had that I'd have to say two, to be honest with you, there was probably two relationships I had that were sort of like that one extreme yeah. um, that it just, it's funny to not funny, ha, ha, but, but ironic to look back and see who, who, I seem to be during that time and the kind of the reputation I built for myself because yeah. in, in town, because it's just so different than who I am now or who I've been in the last 15 years of my life. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just so different. But I mean, I've thrown, I've thrown one ex-boyfriend, I threw a glass at him and it broke and shattered yeah. in, in a restaurant. And then one like now, very, very real housewives of me. What was it in a sit down restaurant or a, like a bar? It was a sit down restaurant that turned into a bar, like after a certain time, I think, you know yeah. what I mean? Like where they move the tables kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it was definitely a before you go out spot. Like it wasn't late night or anything like that. Um, yeah. And then the other ones have been like, there was a couple of places like bars that were like Sunday spots where you'd go early evening on Sundays, you know, granted we were all a lot younger. We didn't have kids and nothing, whatever. And there, I had an ex-boyfriend that was kind of a, a mean, uh, dramatic trigger type of person. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I threw things and we would get in, I mean, it was like, it was almost like I had no, uh, I had no moral, not moral compass. That's not what I'm looking for, but I just had no care to have self-awareness during that time. Yeah. But like now, like if my husband and I ever gotten, which I can't see this ever happening because we don't really fight like that. But if we ever got into a fight in public, it would be mortifying because yeah. you're right. I mean, people would be like, Oh my God, do they have a bad marriage? What's going on? You know, yeah. people yeah. start to like think what's happening at home when you're 24, 25, it's not that big a deal. But now at 40, I'd be, I'd be mortified. Well, I mean, I, I think, going off of what you said and me being in the situation too. It's not that you lose your morals. It's that somebody has kind of beaten you up so much yeah. that you've, you're just pieces of yourself trying to put yourself back together to the point where yeah. you're not like, you know, you're surrounding and you yeah. know you're in public, but you're so hurt and so confused and so defeated that you're like, you're at your wits end where you just like to total strangers, you might look like you're losing your mind, but to you, you're like, this is crazy. Like I remember, I remember one girl, she just constantly lied to me constantly. Yeah. And the thing that she, that we were trying to work through, I said to her, like, this is bad enough. Do not lie about it. Do not have me find any other information yeah. out as time goes by. And so sure enough, she lied and she lied and she lied on the lie and on that lie and on the other lie. So we were out somewhere and we were walking next to each other and she wasn't talking to me and she was kind of pulling her whole like catatonic. I don't know what's going on in my life. Like I'm just a vegetable. And I literally just jogged away. I just jogged away. I left her where she was and I just went. I just like, I basically like 
got away from i was like i can't stand next to her feeling like this magnet being repelled all the time so i was like okay if you don't want to talk to me and you don't want me around you're going to see what it's like to not have me around and we were in a place that she wasn't familiar with Mm -hmm. and i and and it was a family place it's not like we were in the middle of nowhere but Mm -hmm. we were in a family you know style setting whatever and i just left and i went and like did some things on my own and and i gave her time i gave her time to think about the fact that she lied think about the fact that she ignored me think about the fact she silenced me think about the fact that she made me feel uncomfortable maybe she'll call nope maybe she'll text no maybe she'll care no maybe she'll come find me no so after everything she put me through and i gave her like an hour to figure it out mm-hmm. when i went to go look for her and came back it picked up right where it was and mm-hmm. it was silence disrespect Mm -hmm. and i think the only thing that came out of her mouth initially was i can't believe you left me here and i was like i didn't know what else to do so to people watching it's like oh my gosh these people are together where's that guy going because i've Mm -hmm. seen other people do that but to me i was like if i stay here my head's gonna blow up like i have to get out of the situation and i'm the type of person where i'll tell people if you can't respect me instead of screaming at you and punching mm-hmm. walls and stuff i'm gonna excuse myself and, and so- i mean that's probably a good way to be and you know i guess you know i'd have to see it in person but that's probably a good way to be to some extent that if you know you and you know your your flaws or your weaknesses or whatever like to remove yourself from a situation until things are calmed down is probably the way to go about it yeah. especially if you have a mate that is explosive with things and you know it's going to mm-hmm. go that direction like you should probably excuse yourself just so it doesn't go that direction in public. Yeah, but I, mean, I know in people that I've dated, I know that they knew exactly what could push me and they would push it. Uh, then, yeah, I, 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 then, I would say I know people like that too. And they would say, and then once you got pushed, they would say, oh, look at you. Look at yeah. you. Look, look at, at you crazy. acting crazy. Yeah, right. I've definitely right. been with people like that, too. Yeah. Look that, at you that, acting crazy. It's and, like they they knew that it, or or they catch wind of the fact that there's been some incidences that have happened. Like in my case, it was always like there had been some incidences that happened that started to give me that name. Right. Yeah. And so any chance they got and it typically re- was around like they were probably cheating on me and needed me to leave the scenario yeah. so that they could be still out and, you know, with whoever. But like any time they could get me that trigger to know that I was going to act crazy, it built their story up more that I was the problem. You know what I mean? Well, that was the thing. Like people know I don't want to yell. I don't want to yell. So if I yell, yeah. they would say, look at you. You're crazy. Oh, yeah. Look at you, you know? losing your cool. You're you're yeah. the one. You're freaking out. Like, yeah, yeah. I've been and through I, that, too. And- I, I do remember that. There was one girl one night she called me about and I'm not I'm not. I'm not exaggerating this. She probably called me 30 to 40 derogatory names that night. And I was so sick and tired. I sat on the edge of the bed and I whispered a name up to her. Like, you're going to call me all these names. Okay, fine. I'm going to call you a name. And I call, and I said, I said the B word. I sat on the edge of the bed. I'm like, why do you have to be such a, and she looked at me and she goes, now we're equal. I said, what? She said, well, I called you all these names. You call me that one name. We're equal. I said, I owe you 39 more. She said, no, because you're not the type of person to do it. You doing one is like me doing 40 because like, you know, I swear and I'm whatever. And I was like, I just find that to be so insane that somebody could push, 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 push. And the moment you come back and you're like, you know, why do you got to be such a, you know, and then that's, it's like, oh, okay, we're equal now. And I'm like, because I got you to come down to my level. Did y'all make up after that? Because to me, that would cause a laughter, that conversation. I, no, uh, actually, she threw a knife at me that night. Oh. <laughs> I think it was that night. I think it was that night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And by the way, my, I don't think I said this out loud, <laughs> but she missed me so terribly that i in my head i was like was that knife meant for me because she missed it wide right i said i I called it the scott norwood bills fans will know what i'm talking about but like no she 
I don't know what got into her that night. She started fighting with me and she hit me and I had been hit by somebody before. And I said to her, she hit me. She slapped me in my chest and I looked at her and I said, no, nah. I said, no, 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 no. I was, I was laying in bed. I said, I'm not doing this. I said, you can't touch me like that. I said, that's not, no, 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 no. I started feeling some kind of way. I was like, and my thing is like, I'm not going to hit a woman or anything like that. I just felt like totally victimized. I'm like, I need to, I need to, like, I was shaken. I was like, I just need to get away from this. And I said, don't act like my ex who hit me. And her response was, well, now that you compare me to your ex, I'm not sorry for it. And I was like, how? How, what type of manipulation did that turn around? And she got out of the bed, shut all the lights off in the apartment, ran into the kitchen. I heard the drawer open. I come into the kitchen. I can't see anything because your eyes have to adjust to the dark, right? So it's like that bluish black light. And I'm like trying to look and I'm trying to find her in the house. I run all the way through. I can't find her. She's right in front of me at the door, but I can't see her because it's like pitch black. I see her. She's got the knife to her wrist. And she goes, this is what you make me want to do. Granted, this is after she hit me. She goes, this is what you made me want to do. And then me being the person that I am, I go into protect mode. Like, even though she hurt me, I'm going to protect her. I always put somebody before myself. So I looked at her and I was like, oh, my gosh, whatever it is, whatever you need to hear. Like, I'm sorry. Don't hurt yourself, please. Like, are you OK? And then she did something that I could only compare to the Joker. She went, oh, you thought I was going to kill myself? And she went from like anger to smiling, grabbed the knife and flung a steak knife at me in the dark. And I knew it didn't hit me, obviously, when I didn't feel anything. And I look back on that night going, that night started with me getting hit in my chest. And it ended with me getting blamed for if she hurt herself with a knife being hurled at my face after I decided to protect her. So okay, I mean, you, get, you get the medal of crazy of crazy girls today, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> you I went. think I get it. I think was... I get the medal every day. So yeah, that's, bad. that's bad. See, but that's the thing. And I think that's what women don't understand about men that, that really work hard to be good men is if you've seen everything that I've seen, there's a part of me that never wants to date again. There's a part of me that that doesn't want to let anybody drive me crazy or hurt me again or throw anything at me or call me names or disrespect my family. There's there's everything that I've seen has shown me that men and women, in my case, women, but I'm not going to discriminate here because I know there's men out here that do bad things, too. But what I've seen in dating is that men and women are capable of things that I can't even think of. And when I date someone and I give them a chance and I try to like work things out, I, you get to that point where you kind of know it's over. And like I told you, my fault was not leaving. But when you see the things that I've seen, you start to get to a point where my heart, I'm a hopeful romantic. I will always believe in love, but, but my gut, like kind of fights in my heart and my gut is like dude do you really want to feel this stuff again like my heart's like i want love and my gut's going i don't want somebody to punch me again you know what i mean so it's like it, you right. know and i think a lot of people struggle with that but then i'm out on this cruise ship and i'm seeing these people that are together uh -huh. and i'm like how did this happen like there was a girl gorgeous dressed to the nines beautiful really expensive restaurant and uh -huh. she's with this like doofy guy who she's looking at him. She's trying to tuck. She's like, can you help me, babe? Can you help me? And she's trying to like tuck his shirt and make him look nice. And he's just standing there like a like a like a three year old idiot. And I'm going, you have, they have kids. No, nah, I don't think so. But but I'm looking I'm looking at her going, here is this gorgeous woman who obviously dressed up nice for him. And here's this guy that can't tuck his shirt in to save his life. Like he looked like his parents ra it, it looked like the type of kid whose parents literally zipped up his zipper and put his belt on for him at 18. So it's like, bro, you got a great girl. I don't know how it happened, but like you can you can do a little bit for her because she's doing a lot for you. I mean, she's she you could tell she was going like an extra mile for him and he was just kind of standing there. And I just said to my mom, I go, How does that happen? But 
I have only seen The Devil's Reject. Maybe he was rich. I don't know. But I'll tell you, Andrew, I don't understand. I know we talk about dating and relationships pretty much every show, but I don't understand dating anymore. I feel like the guys who are jerks and idiots and have no common sense and have no respect, they get not only do they get women, they get a lot of women. And then yeah. they consider like the good guys that, you know, it's like and it's like I'm not it's not like I'm a good guy who doesn't work out, who doesn't take care of my body, who isn't funny, who is. I mean, it's like. Right. I just. It'll it doesn't make sense to me that women are attracted to projects and, and maybe men are, too. But yeah. but in, you know, in, in my in my dating life, it's like. I see women with these men who are like flirting with their friend right in front of them. And then here's me like ready to give somebody the world. And it's like, nah, I'm good. And seeing that on the cruise ship, I was like. It's wow. so common though. Like it's just so common though. It's like But ha- but it's like what it who I don't know, but there's there is the societal there is that society piece of the pie here that is just, you know, women are are taking care of people, taking care of people, you know? And I'd like to think that over time, you know, the next 20 to 30 years and the next generation that changes a little bit, you know, with more women having a little bit more power here. But yeah. I do think that it that it is not that uncommon. And I also think, too, you don't know what kind of baggage people are carrying around. Right. right. Yeah. So when you see when you see women settling on these projects, which is what it is, you know, whether it be a, a guy who, like you said, is like that or. Yeah. You know, just somebody who is really not worthy of them, for example. Yeah. I I don't who knows what they've been taught or told their whole life about themselves. Who knows? Are they dealing with low self-esteem? Is this the best they think they can get? I mean, listen, I think the same thing about men who settle, like, or like you see, like this has happened before. Like I've seen a guy that aged very well, for example, from high school, and he yeah. married. I want to say either his college sweetheart, his high school sweetheart, he may be married. And over time, you know, he kept aging well and she did not. And eventually they, I think they did get divorced and both probably are both remarried. Who knows? But I do remember, you know, as bad as it sounds, thinking the same thing you thought, like, God, like, you know, like, how does, how, how does he find her attractive or whatever? And I even, like, I've had people in my life that, you thought would settle for not settle. That's the wrong word. I would say settle down and get married to some gorgeous girl because they're very good looking men. And, you know, girls always wanted them or whatever. And they settle on like a very normal looking person who you wouldn't see as someone striking. And that's always a shock. It's like, huh? Like, that's not what what I would have thought either. So again, you don't know. I have a friend of mine who I love dearly as a person, but as a husband, I don't think he's so wonderful. And I've seen a different side of him now that he's married, uh, you know, more of a narcissistic side. And he says to me the other night, and listen, we have a joke banter. So it's okay for him to say this to me because we're we're friends like that. But he said to me that women's value are, are, I think stock depreciates as they get older. Like every 10 years, it goes down, da, 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 da. And I was like, listen, I was dressed to the nines Friday night. I was looking good. I don't look like a 40 year old woman when I'm dressed like that for sure. And I've got a great career. I had stock options at body armor. I made a shit ton of money. Like buddy, my stock is going up. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to tell you, but my stock is going up. And that was my response. But there are men who think that. Yeah. That once you're married, you have kids as a woman, you better not leave me because you're never going to find somebody like men don't men want a young, good looking girl. They don't want a woman who has baggage or whatnot. So I think it goes both ways is the point. I think it does go both ways on that. And I think that a man that speaks that way is obviously a man who has a very small mind because it's it, it's mind blowing. The things that, that come out of his mouth. I love him as a person. Like I said, very funny, all the things. But. I mean, he's also, a man he's also who, used to talking to somebody who can, t- who, who just takes it. Right. And like, when he says these things to me, jokingly as a friend, right. I'm not going to sit there and, and humor his conversation. I'll step back up to it because I I'm confident in my value. The thing about 
stuff like that is that I think people say things like that, like, oh, you can't leave me because look, you got these kids and you have stretch marks. You have this. Any any man who would say something like that is a man who is not confident in themselves because they don't or overconfident in themselves. I, I think they can't keep, I think in their mind, deep down somewhere, they might look overconfident on the outside, but on the inside, there's like a little kid screaming because to me, a person who says you can't leave me because da 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 da, that's control. Oh, as, for sure. As opposed to like, if I was with a woman and I'm treating her well, I would say if you, and I've said this to women before, I'm like, if you leave, if you leave me thinking you're going to find me out there, like the one girl that said, oh, I like you, but you need to be six feet tall. I said to her, go find all the six feet tall guys. I guarantee you, they're not going to have my personality. They're not going to be like me. I can look a woman in the eye and say, you're not going to find me again. And I mean that. I've said that before to people too. Just, I mean, I'm confident in that too. Like in the way that I am as a person to people that I love, like, and I, and I, I can say that too about anybody in the past that I've ever even seriously dated. There's not been a whole lot of serious relationships, but I can honestly say that I never left a situation where the, where the ex person didn't still want to be my friend in the future or whatever. And, and I attribute it to that to like, you, you're definitely going to re- regret losing me. Well, and, and I, I've dated a lot. Of, well, I'm going to, let's get into this because this has been on my mind. So let's get into this, by the way, we keep our promises here on the show. So Andrea said on the next show, we are going to see if that girl's sister got in touch. She did not. Not so, yet. It's only been a week. It's only um, been a week. We're still well, working on it, you guys. I don't think that's going to happen. So, anywho, but I want to get into the reading into or not reading into things because I've had things happen to me, and I know other people have them, and I'm sure people watching and listening have some of these questions on their mind, no matter what their age is. So, I've had two ex girlfriends, uh, one 15 years, 16 years ago, and one 11, 12 years ago. And the one of 15 plus years reached out to me what over a year ago and sent me a video like went on to my instagram sent me a didn't like say like hey congratulations whatever sent me a video congratulating me telling me how proud she is of me we should be able to talk to each other about it and i found that really interesting i also found the conversations after that interesting because she wasn't letting out anything and i was like what's your status right now she's like oh i'm married i've been married for a couple years i don't really know i guess it's okay and i'm like yeah okay so there was that one and then there's another one of like 11 years ago where i might have talked to you about this off the air but her and i got together she was younger Oh, we both were. I was like 22. She was 19, something like that. And we worked together, got to know each other. She was coming off a really bad relationship. She wasn't healed from it. Her words, not mine. And it didn't work out. We tried to, I tried to work it out for like five or six months and it didn't end up working. She moved back home because we were both living Uh, We were working in a place that we were both living. And then I came back to New York. Eventually, she went back to North Carolina. So we lost touch after that. Now, she wanted to be friends. And I was super hurt by what she had done. And I didn't appreciate it. And I also realized that if I talked to her again, I was going to be interested in her again. And I didn't want to put myself in that situation. So long story short, she said a lot of ridiculous stuff when we were dating And none of it made any sense. It's actually pretty funny. But in the moment, it was like, what is this? And so a couple of years passed. She sent me a message on Facebook and she apologized. And I said, well, you're not apologizing to me by typing. This is ridiculous. I said, if you want to apologize, if you want to apologize to me, do it. Do it like a human being does it and call me on the phone. Like that's you don't apologize to me by sending me two sentences on Facebook. So she called me. But maybe that was an ease, ease into it. Yeah. But so she, listen, I appreciated it. I just said like, this is not, you know, just if you want to. Remember, people change over time. Sometimes. So. They do when it's been 10 or 15 years. Sometimes. They do. Sometimes. And so, so she 
no, so I wasn't mean about it. I was just like, hey, like, if you want to talk to me, talk to me. You know, like, we haven't talked in years if you want to talk to me. So we talked. And I told her the stuff that like happened when we were dating that really hurt me. And she's like, I don't even remember doing that. Like, I, I'm sorry. I was naive. I was young. I didn't know what I wanted. And everything she said, you know, made sense, kind of whatever. And then we didn't talk. So fast forward to COVID, right? And she reaches out to me at the beginning of COVID. And I was dating somebody and it was kind of shaky. And we actually ended up breaking up like a month later anyways, but not because of this. And so she reached out to me and out of respect for my girlfriend at the time, I was like, you know, I, I don't know if I should read. It wasn't anything bad, but she wrote me a long message. You know, she wanted to know if I was OK and all this stuff. And she's like, I heard New York got hit worse than other places. Are you all right? And I'm like, it's been 11 years. Like, why are you like, why would you even have thought about me? So she's like, well, my grandfather died. I thought you should know. He always, you know, she's like, he would talk about you from time to time and, you know, that he liked me and appreciated me, whatever. So then we spoke on the phone. Now, she had since gotten married. She had a kid and she got married when I got married back in 2014. And obviously now I'm divorced. And so I'm sitting here like, what does any of this mean? And then I said, you know what? Out of curiosity, because I didn't understand why she mentioned about her grandfather and talking about me. I said, what did he say to you? She's like, oh, well, you know, I was like, when it came to me, like, what did he say? And she's like, oh, well, he just like always wanted to make sure I was happy. He wanted to make sure I was with the right person and that I was in the right place and that I actually did what I wanted to do and not what like that I wasn't afraid to go after what I wanted. And I'm sitting here going, married woman, kid grandpa talked about me as it pertains to you going after what you wanted and not settling and being happy and so we, we spoke a couple times and you know she helped me through some some stuff as a friend but it was just strange and since then every couple weeks for the last couple years she'll connect on my social media and then but not say anything, just kind of like be on, you know, just kind of look stuff up where she knows I can see it and disappear. And now it's been like every single day. And I and I and she hasn't posted anything in like two years or a year or whatever on her stuff. But I I look at situations like that and I bring it up because it's confusing to me. And I think it's confusing to our listeners and our uh, viewers, too, is that when somebody reaches out from your past who has moved on, per se, and is getting in touch with you, wants you to know about things that really, I mean, unless you want to be with me, why should I know that your grandfather was asking you if you were happy and asking about me and this and that? And then to constantly want to know what you're doing, what you're up to. So I, I open that to discussion since you and I are here to not only discuss our lives, but with social media in today's world, a lot of people have questions as to why did my ex get in touch? Why are they on my stuff? Why are they constantly kind of patrolling what I'm doing? So I thought I would ask you. I think that she's probably unhappy in her marriage or and maybe not fully unhappy, but questioning some things in her marriage. And she's probably, you know, has this kid though. And, and, you know, that does, that's different. Like it's, it's a lot easier to get divorced or make changes in your life when you don't have a child to think of, especially if it's a good dad situation, whatever. So I think that's probably where she's at. Um, I don't think to me, I, I don't think it's a bad thing that she's reaching out to you or, you know, 11 years ago, I was a different person than I am today. Mm -hmm. 15 years ago, I was a different person than I am today. So her saying that she recognizes things maybe she did wrong or didn't realize how much you cared about her or anything like that, I think is really nice, to be honest with you, because I think that as she's matured, as she's 
grown up, maybe she respects some of the things and though things can't be different, like yeah. she, maybe there's a part of her that wishes that, that they were, or that they worked out different, or maybe timing wasn't right. And you guys met at the wrong time, too young, whatever. I think it's human nature. And I don't think it's another thing that I do not think is uncommon. I think that there's probably a lot of listeners who have had very similar situations yeah. and are going through similar things. And it is confusing because that person has moved on and you're single. So yeah. What does that mean for you? If you were to keep talking to her every day and develop feelings, like, I think that's where, like, if she's the person who, now listen, let me tell you something. Yesterday, I was scrolling through social media and this girl I know I used to work with, she posted this picture of a flashback photo. Okay. And it looked like high school prom or something. I found out it was middle school, but it was high school prom. And then a picture of them today. And it says, I love you more 30 years later. Now, a few years ago, she got divorced, was going through a bad divorce. And I don't know her like that. Like, I can't say that like, oh, I knew her life, but I knew her enough to know she was married with a kid. And yeah. then all of a sudden she was divorced and single. Okay. So I knew that. So it's funny because I commented right away. I was like, oh my God. I was like, was this your high school boyfriend? She's like middle school. And she's like, and now we're like, so in love, both have been married and they've reconnected and they're so in love. So I'm not saying that it's right or it's wrong to reconnect with somebody from the past. I'm just saying, again, stranger things have happened. Yeah. And, you know, it is not uncommon for somebody to have treated somebody not great. And then years later, realize that they they feel horrible about it or they want to connect with that person because there's a part of their life that maybe centers around what that time of their life was like and that person was a big part of that so i don't know take it for what it is if you don't want to talk to her you don't want to develop feelings for her again or anything like that don't talk to her anymore if that's going to cause you pain but if you want to take a chance on the friendship take a chance on the friendship that's See, that's the thing that I think people see. I'm a very clear. I talked to my buddy about this and I said, and it's not all men and it's not all women. Everybody's different, first of all. Right. Men typically, I would say more than 50% of us are very like, <laughs> we're very clear in the sense of like, I was talking to my buddy Isaac and I said, if we're, this is like, if I say, oh, I had a friend, Bob, and Bob was kind of a jerk. And after a while, I just figured like, it's probably not good to be around Bob because he's super negative. That's the end of the story. If it's a woman, she's like, oh man, Stacy's kind of a jerk. I can't stand Stacy. So what are you guys doing next week? We're going to, we're going to the beach together. And you're like, wait a minute, what? So how women can hate each other, but stay friends where men were like, if we're not fond of you, we're done with that. So what I'm getting at in like the in in like the typical that I would anticipate from a man, because normally when we're done with a friendship, we're done with a friendship. I and I went to school with girls who literally hated each other on Monday, hugged each other on Tuesday, spit at each other on Wednesday and were best friends on Friday. I know I was one of those girls to so keep going. And it's, it, it, it very much confuses me. So, but we get to those, you know, you get to those points and you see those things. So for me, the point that I'm getting at is I'm a very clear person. So when, in the case of like that girl, when she reached out, right, I'm like, okay, you have a family, you have a husband. I don't understand why you're reaching out to me. Very nice, very kind. There's nothing bad, but it's like, I have no idea why the heck you're reaching out to me. But now it's like, check your story, check your story, check your story, check your story. Three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the afternoon, 1 a.m., whenever, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it, but not say anything. And it almost provokes me to want to message her and go, hey, if you have something to say, just say it. Because I'm a very cut and dry person. Like, I'm the I type of too. person where I don't beat around the bush. Me if you have don't waste my time. I won't me. waste yours. No. If you have something to tell me, then tell me. And the yeah. thing is, is like... It's not that she's checked the story once or twice or three times. She's done it pretty much every couple of weeks. I mean, she took a little break and then it's like every day, every other day, every week, every two weeks, now every day again. But I'm looking back on this going like, this is like two years of what's Dan doing, what's Dan posting, what's Dan saying, what's the song on his thing. And it's like, if you want to say something, just say it for, you know, 
you want to be my friend, you're unhappy, like whatever it is, just out with it, you know, and I'm the type of person where one of two things is going to happen with me, I'm either going to just ignore it and be like, I don't even want to see your your face on my Instagram story, or I'm going to respond and I'm going to go like, what's up? Like, not in a mean way, just like, what's what's going on? You You okay? Like, what are you up to? Maybe she's just curious and wishes you well. That's number one. So she number became two Instagram is, fan. I don't like girlfriends that become Instagram fans. I'd rather you just leave. <laughs> so that's. I mean, I have people in my past that I cheer on that I feel like I'm happy. No, I love, not, seeing, I'm, I'm not I love about seeing them successful. I look at all their no, stuff. I like no, it all. I love it I, all. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like the girl. Uh, listen, this was 11 years of it doesn't matter silence so it doesn't matter i don't know i just I'm but the what are you gonna do when she sees this is she gonna know it's about her i who knows that she'll well if it's on her story then she, then she'll yeah i was gonna say <laughs> what if i create a reel just of this part of the conversation and i post it and then you repost it you would do that because i will do that no yeah. i don't know yeah. i don't know i might yeah. do that who knows yeah. But you uh, know. I don't know. I, I don't I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think it's I don't think it's a bad thing. It's just one of Here's those my thing always too. listen, you've shared a significant part of your life with somebody and you've yeah. had a shoot ton of love for them. OK, even yeah. if things end bad or whatever, yeah. at some point in your life, you're going to have a memory or reminisce about that person. And we talked about this with friendships too. You've had these big friendships with people and that was a significant part of your life. And even if it ends bad at some point, you might have a good feeling about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's hard. It's like, it's hard to think that you just, once you love somebody, does, do you ever just stop loving them or does it just fade? Like, I, I don't know, because I feel like there's people that I, loved deeply that I'll probably always love and not be in love with. You know what I mean? I'll love and wish them well and hope that they do well. This was a very different there. I brought it up because it was very different. This was not like a, Hey, how you doing? Hope you're well. This was like a, Hey, how you doing? By the way, I got to let you know that my grandfather asked about you to make sure that I was happy with the man that I well, she needed a way to talk to you. So that was the good way. You right. got to always throw in somebody's family. I know, but how they how are they going to say I don't want to talk to you when you throw in their family and a death? But you think about think about it. Why don't you just ask her? Why don't you say, "Hey, I feel a vibe that you may not be happily married." Could you could you elaborate on that? You would do that. I would do that, and I honestly I will invite her on this if you tell me who she is. Oh yeah, you would do that for sure. I'll ask her personally. No, we've we've had very honest conversations, but it was like. She was like giving information, giving information, giving information, like leaning forward. And then yeah. when I kind of like leaned forward toward her, like, OK, well, like, what is this that you're trying to say? She like ran back and I was like, don't don't play games with me, dude. It's been 11 years. You got something to say. Just out and say it. You got nothing to lose. So that's what I think. That's what I think for either of you guys. You have nothing to lose. Right. I got nothing to lose because Lord knows. Whatever happens, I'll have a story to talk on the show about. <laughs> exactly. It's a win-win. It's a win-win situation. That's going to be a real. What we just did and your response and your face is going to be a real. I can't so, wait. I look forward to you putting this up so that she can see it and probably just stare at it and write nothing to me. If, if I knew who she was, what if she starts following me? I Maybe off the air, I should tell you who she is. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. Sorry, listeners. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You got to have but, VIP status like I do in order to find out the names. Yeah. If you want the uh, VIP to two mics, no filter, then I don't know. We'll have to figure out what that is. But we're going to take our step aside. And thank you for watching and listening this week on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Two mics, no filter. Andrea Smith, myself, Dan Tortora, a.k.a. DT. I can only imagine what Andrea is going to do, but I know she always means it with good spirits so that is true that is true that right. is true and by the way go jaguars fantastic season we appreciate you yep that's true